What's up guys, Brad here from Piney Grove and I also have Lucas from Peaks Peak with me. We are at Louisville, Kentucky at the 2023 Equipment Expo. We're in front of the LS tractor booth right now, but we're gonna be going through all the booths here and trying to find the latest innovations in tractor and all outdoor equipment. As we walk through the show here, you can just see there is just equipment. There's acres of equipment. We hope to stop by many of these booths and get lots of content for you guys today. All right, guys, I'm standing here with Tony from Tony's Tractor Adventure, and he's a busy guy, but he said he would carve out a few minutes for us and talk Listen, about- always got time for you, brother. Always got time for me, right? right. Fellow uh, serviceman here. Yeah. Um, but he's gonna tell us about some new features or a new model. What do we got here? Let this me let is, you tell this the story. Is, well, it's, it's not, it's about a year old, but it's my favorite tractor. This is what we have at our farm. Uh, one of the tractors we have at our farm. This is the T25. And uh, one of our, one of my buddies here that, that works for TYM, he coined the phrase, this is a little bulldog. This small tractor, I put a front mounted postal digger on it. And it has the, uh, it has the flow rate good enough that it, I dug every, I dug uh, 54 holes with a front mounted postal digger. Every one of them, this tractor did perfect with it. So this is my go-to tractor. We have a 474 on the farm, and then right now we're demoing a 2515 on the farm. Uh, but they're all nice tractors and they all have their purpose, but I still gravitate towards this tractor. So and the this, model is again? This is the T25. It's, it's 25 horsepower, Yanmar powered, hydrostatic. It's just bulletproof. We've had, I guess right now we're at 200, maybe 215 hours, nothing. No failures. Matter of fact, we have 400 hours on our 474 and zero failures, other than what I broke. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I can't. I can't. You know, I backed into a tree. I really can't blame the tractor company for that. Yeah, I know that on our channel, I'm pretty rough on my tractor, and so yeah, we can't blame the manufacturers when we when we go beyond the limits. But yeah. so you highly recommend the T25. It's a non-emissions tractor, and it, you it, can get a lot of work done with it. Well, the fact that it can lift 1,300 pounds, we put a grapple on it. Uh, if if I'm in the saw, if I'm in the at the sawmill in the log yard, I tend to gravitate to this because it's got so much capacity to lift, and it's so maneuverable. So I can go pick up a thousand pound log, set it on the on the sawmill, and I, I see it, the, your visibility is so good on this tractor because right, it's right. got a downward slope ho uh, hood, and that means something. Some of the some tractors have that big long hood, and it's they're not great for like putting a log on a sawmill doing stuff that's right in front of you. Where this one, you're doing grapple work, you can really see what you're doing. And uh, now, it's, Tony, it's a real tractor. Tony brought up a good point, visibility. Like I want to get a cab tractor, but I also don't want to lose that visibility of an open station. And the fact that this little uh, T25, 25 horsepower tractor can lift 1300 pounds. All the way, all the way to full height. All the way to full height and um, it's nimble and you can see around it, makes it a very useful tool around the property. I've used up enough of his time. We appreciate you coming on our channel and you have a good Expo 2023 Expo. Yep. Good to see you guys. All right, guys, we are looking for some more stuff to film. How do you like the show so far, Lucas? A little bit overwhelming, man. They've everything here. I know. It's just like you don't know where to look next. There's every manufacturer here. And there's also Brock here from Rock Hill Farm. So he's, he's keeping us entertained along the way. I'm having a good time learning a lot about tractors from these two guys. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, I was walking by the New Holland booth and I saw this excavator and my heart immediately reached out to it because we have a mini excavator. But what caught my attention is this is electric. So we got Dan here that was willing to talk to us on camera about it. So Dan, tell us a little bit about this. What's its capabilities? How long will it last? And why did New Holland build it? Who is the intended buyer for this? Well, great questions, Brad. Thanks for having us here. Uh, this is New Holland's first entry-level product into the electric market. So this is our New Holland E15X, um, one and a half metric ton excavator here. So you're gonna be right at around 2,200 pounds um, of overall operating weight. What's nice about this unit is it has a lot of the same functions as a diesel, diesel unit. You've got the hydraulic tracks that'll suck in to get you through those narrow doorways. Okay. So you can get through that 36 inch doorway, no problem. You still have full functionality, just like a normal excavator would. You know, your hydraulics, you got one way and two way auxiliaries on there. So if you need to run a hammer, if you need to run a thumb, all those capabilities are gonna be the same as you would with a diesel, diesel machine. So you know what the number one question is gonna be from everyone out there watching it, is how long will this thing run uh, doing some you know, pretty heavy digging work on a, a single battery charge and then how long to recharge? Great question, we get it all the time. Right. 
six to eight hours of continuous use. So as you know, with excavators, normally you're not operating nope. it for continuous use for six to eight hours. So that's gonna get you no problem through the day. You can plug it into a regular 110 outlet overnight. It'll char charge overnight. You could also have a supercharger too that you can plug it into the 220 as well for you. So, so yeah, that will 220? Yep, absolutely. So that'll charge it in three to four hours um, to get you fully charged. Otherwise, the slow charge will get you uh, fully charged in eight to 10 hours. That seems pretty impressive because it's not an overly big machine, so you Correct. wouldn't think there's you know a ton of batteries in it. But. Well, and, and a lot of it has to do with what you're what you're using it for too. Obviously, if you're going to be tracking a lot more, that's going to use battery more mm -hmm. than just sitting up sitting or digging your, your trench out. But yeah, six to eight hours of continuous use, and um, I think that's plenty of time for the operator to get the job done. Get it charged overnight. And, and it, it is good. for a homeowner because I use my excavator, you know, two or three hours, mm -hmm. and then that's it, right? I'm yeah. not a into it commercially. Well, and another one of the benefits is, is that it's silent. Other than the obvious, yes. you're not using any fuel, um, no emissions on it as well, as well as it's it's quiet. When this thing is on, it would be this loud right now yeah. as it would be if it was turned on. So um, for for that, those operators or customers that have restrictions, say in, in subdivisions, you can't operate due to noise complaints. With this machine, you can get in there earlier, stay later, because yep. you don't have the level of noise that you would uh, with a regular diesel model. Also working indoors. So if you've got contractors that right. have a busted line inside of a building, you can pull this right through the door, operate inside, not have to clear out a building or yep. all the other workers for that day. No so emissions. You can get the job done with the, with the emissions, uh, with no emissions on there. All so. right, so I appreciate your time. I know you're a busy man. There's lots of people here that want to talk to you, but I'm going to ask you one final question. Sure That's going to be, what is the price point for this? Price point on most of our electric product is about double the cost of diesel. So you're going to be right. Of, of the equivalent diesel model. So you're going to be right with this or right around $70,000. 70, uh, seven yeah. 70, 70, okay. But there's a lot you can do with it. There's a lot of places Absolutely. you can go um, where you couldn't go with mm -hmm. with a diesel like you talked about indoors. Yeah. So it does have a lot of value. Absolutely. But keep in mind, there's a lot of, lot of government rebate programs to go with the e economical, okay. efficient uh, machines out there. So, so bring bring the price point yeah, down. Depending on where your state is. Well, hey, we appreciate your time. Thanks and you for, uh, have, for having us. have a uh, good rest of your show. You do the same. Thank you. All right. Never know what you'll stumble upon. This is an electric log splitter, and there's my hand. It's not very big, it's very portable. A neat little product. What gives Lucas and I static all the time about Kubota, and you just saw him posing with a Kubota Zero Turn. There's so much interesting equipment at this show, you just really can't take it all in. We're just, between me, Lucas, and Brock, we're just like squirrels, here, there, here, there. Brock's actually getting this machine behind me, and uh, he's talking to the um, salesman right now, but he's actually will have this machine and it'll be on his channel. So be sure to check that out. So we're in the LS tractor booth and just gonna do a quick spin around. There's their neat camo tractor and all their models. Then they got one up on a pedestal. I'm not very familiar with the LS models themselves but I know that I'm seeing them more and more as I drive across the country, I'm seeing more and more LS dealers. This is an amazing show and I'm not here to promote the show. I've never been here before. Um, as a tractor content creator, we felt it was necessary to come here and just kind of see everything that's getting um, offered out there by industry. But there is so much other stuff here that literally my mind and my eyes are just exploding. I don't know where to look next. There is a uh, um, everything from lawn care. We did a little interview with Brad from Copper Creek. So we got Toro here. We got all the major manufacturers of tractors here. High-end stuff that you and I would never use on a hobby farm yeah. that's used on big skid steers and just things that we'd never use, but it's all fascinating. And it's all here in one place. And I, I feel like I can't really capture it all. I, I don't know where right. to go to next. Everything from pavers to uh, fountains and pools and the whole works. I mean, it's just overwhelming. It really is, and we're going to have a day and a half here to capture it all, but I think we're only going to get, uh, get a small portion of it. But that's just an update as we walk around. I wanted to catch Lucas. He's been around capturing a lot of things, so be sure to check out Peaks Peaks Hobby Homestead. He'll have all the footage from the show over on his channel as well. Yep. So I was walking along, and I saw this thing, and it really caught my eye. It's got um, a, a skid steer type of attachment here on the front. They've got some logs here for demonstration. But I saw that this was a rather small piece of equipment and I was wondering what you'd use it for. In Florida, they do a lot of logging and they have big equipment, skid steers, that, that pull all the logs out of the forest. And I asked the guys what these are used for and he said it's in an urban area where people want trees cut down, they want a low impact to their lawn 
and that's what the, these machines are for. They're low impact, they articulate in the back, and I thought it was a really interesting machine to show you. I just can't seem to walk away from this machine, so I got Lucas to grab the camera. I, I am literally in love with this machine. I don't know what I'd ever do with it, but I, I just like it. Here's the future of tractors. Electric tractor by Yanmar. And one thing that we're seeing a lot of is electric and also remote control. And I don't know if that ramp is 55 degrees, but if it is, that's a pretty steep slope for that mower to mow. Another thing we're seeing a lot of is these little portable machines. These stand-on type of machines, and Dixie Chopper has one, and it's called the MS700. Let's take a look at that. So it's a track machine, and it's got a little bucket on it. And here's the operator station and the controls. Looks like a very nimble machine. I can see a use for that at Piney Grove. We dropped off Brock from Rock Hill. What's up, Brock? Couldn't hang? All right, guys, I'm with my good friend Scott here from Hydro Gear, and we've got an electric concept vehicle behind us, and Scott doesn't build the vehicle, but he builds the components in it. So, Scott, there's a big push towards electric, especially on the UTV side. You want to tell us a little bit about that, how much range we can get with that, and where, what manufacturer will we find your equipment in? Well, what we're showing here today is just more, more of a concept, uh, you know, so... Uh, Trying, trying to get people interested in, in using our components in, in, in uh, uh, utility vehicles. So okay. you know, with our equipment, it's with batteries, it depends on the terrain, what type of thing you're doing. So, but you can get a full day's uh, work out of, out, of, out of our battery setup, depending on how, how many you put in there. So. Okay, and so you've got the actual uh, motors and everything over there. Let's migrate over there sure. and uh, talk about them a little bit in detail, how they take that electrical power and turn it into a rotating force. Let's do it. Yep. So what we're showing here is our, our full electric line of uh, 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 transmission. So we have the residential units for ZTRs all the way up to the commercial units for ZTRs. What's great about these is these, these particular motors, uh, we're making and winding these in Indianapolis. So this is not something coming from overseas. We're local. We're, we work closely with our manufacturers. We do all the software, programming, everything, uh, uh, hardware and software for our, our, all of our transmissions. Yeah, I really like that USA made <laughs> stuff going on there. That, that's some good stuff. Now, um, what kind of longevity tests do we get out of these? Like, um, I'm sure you've stress tested them, but what's the expected life of these motors? At least the life of the vehicle or beyond. I mean, there's very little, very few wear parts in here. So, mm -hmm. and with with uh, with our hydraulic units, usually, you know, they, they wear after time. Mm -hmm. But with the motors, they just they they keep going basically almost you know forever. So completely waterproof. Completely waterproof. I think IP66, I believe, is the rating we have okay. on these. So. Um, and uh, you know, again, we, we, we do all the hardware, software, controllers, and everything you know, for our systems. Well, hey, we appreciate the information there, Scott. We know that a lot of things are going electric. This is kind of the way of the future. It's upon us now, and we're just seeing more and more UTVs out there with electrical components, and I guess a lot more of them are going to have smart tech components. Well, let's hope so. All right, man. <laughs> Thank you. There are just so many vendors out here. It is just a sea of vendors, ATVs. A lot of robotic lawnmowers and things like that, but there's also going to be excavators, tractors, just a whole big proving yard out here where you can test drive a lot of this equipment. Because as we know, this equipment isn't cheap, so you kind of want to check it out a little bit before you drop those dollars on it. It rained last night, so we got these remote control mowers just having a good old time. There's another remote control mower over there. Almost looks like he was cutting sod. I like the color of this one. We're used to Kubota orange, but that's a good color right there. That 4060 is a nice tractor. Yeah, it is. That's a neat little machine right there getting a lot of little tight places with that. Looks like someone's been having some fun in this area right here. A little soupy. There's just so many of these little stand-on machines out here. And I don't know if the market's going in that direction or if these have been around for a while, but you see a lot of them out here at the show. Here's another example of a skid loader, this time by Bobcat. Here's another one by Ditchwitch over here. This guy's having a lot of fun. I think he's having the most fun of anybody in this show. He probably knows what he's doing. Yeah, I think that guy's been on one of these before. He probably came to the show 
to put on a show. Coyote is becoming a recognizable brand with compact tractors, and you see their skid steer here. They've also got a good looking side by side as well. It's the model 2400. It's a muddy mess out here, but people are having fun. So here's the grasshopper demo area. And if you want to see the grasshopper mower, go check out Kelly's Country Life. Andrew and Tiffany over there are being sponsored by Grasshopper and they've got one of these machines on their property that they're gonna to use to keep it groomed. Hey, Lucas, you wanna do this? This will be fun. No, no, you already embarrassed me on a mini one. Come on, man, let's do it. I ain't done it. Guys, if you haven't been to one of these shows but you've been thinking about it, you really should consider it. It's not that expensive to come in here and uh, there's just so much to see. And if you're into this type of equipment, you've got all the manufacturers here. Inside, you can stay out of the weather and talk to people in that private environment, or you could come outside here, sign up with your driver's license and drive pretty much anything, any piece of equipment you could imagine, you could come out here and drive it. From small stuff to big excavators and big skid steers. This guy just snuck up on me. Remote control. Well, here's the John Deere side-by-side, -side, and that is a really good-looking cab. Looks like there's a lot of visibility with that cab. This is the ATV track where you can drive all the ATVs. Yeah, they got a little obstacle course or something with some hay bales. I don't know what brand that is, but there's a Bobcat. The Green's John Deere, of course. There's a Yanmar. There's a Gravely over there. They got about three foot of mud or so here, or three foot of dirt and some hay bales for you to drive on. That's the one piece of equipment we don't have at Piney Grove, and that's a UTV. We either use the tractor bucket or take the pickup to, to transport things. So a UTV, especially once we get animals, will be very useful. We just don't know which one we want yet, and they're not cheap, so you wanna make sure you make a good decision because it's something you're gonna have for a long time. I'm here with Tom from the Baby Ox, and I was walking through the outdoor exhibit here, and I saw this wheelbarrow thing that looked like it could save people's backs. So I asked if they wanted to talk about it and they're willing to come on camera. So Absolutely. good, to, good nice, to meet you. Nice to meet and you. Tell me about capacity, runtime. This thing's all electric, right? Yes, sir, all electric. Uh, this is uh, one of two models of the Ox uh, equipment line. This is the Baby Ox, 1,000 pound payload on this machine. This wheelbarrow is about an eight cubic foot wheelbarrow level. That's not mounted up. Uh, self dumping. So push of a button. Dump all your material, plenty of clearance so you can get a full dump of the hopper. Punch of the button, bring it back down. I do want to point out though that the wheelbarrow is an attachment. It's not part of the machine itself. So in about 60 seconds, stand up the machine, pop two pins, walk off the wheelbarrow, and now you've got the base dolly unit. Oh, so it turns into a dolly once this is off. Yes, sir. And then right. there's some more attachments. For instance, the one on the ground over here. This is a uh, commonly used as a plant rack. So potted plants, color flats, things of that nature. Put a couple layers on those, depending on the height of your plants, so you can carry more per load, fewer trips to the backyard or wherever your install site is. All right, we're gonna transition to the controls so you can see how to operate this machine. Let's go ahead and finish bringing down the wheelbarrow. Very simple powering up. Power on here, pull out your e-stop. Okay. Operations, you're doing the steering of the unit. So, so that's all so, manual? So that's okay. all manual. It provides the power. So you can roll it forward as slow as you want. You'll see it starting to pick up and grab. Okay, so it's the wheels are powered as well. At first I thought you meant I had to power no, the wheels. No, you're okay. just doing the steering is all I you're gotcha. doing. It's providing everything else. Just roll it backwards for reverse. Has two speeds, has a rabbit turtle, but then 100% variable within each of those speeds. The, I didn't realize this thing actually powered itself. I thought it was just a dump, but it, that makes sense. But. I can see where this would be like a game changer, say in a, a chicken house or something, or is it mainly used it's, maybe by concrete guys? It's used primarily by our biggest customer base are landscapers. Landscapers, uh, okay. Landscapers, nurseries, contractors of any sort. Uh, we uh, just sold one recently that's going to some landscapers that have uh, customers where they're doing rooftops and such as that because it is electric it is under 36 inches wide they can wheel it right through the front doors into the commercial elevator up to the roof mm -hmm. and there's no problem because there's no emissions no noise they can get in and out of there 
Also, we've had a lot of customers coming by talking about uh, noise restrictions with HOAs and such. Okay. So now they can get out there early in the morning so they're not making uh, the neighbors and the HOAs right. mad and upset and get in there and work. Well, electric seems the way to go. We've been around this show and everything seems like every vendor has something that's electric, you know, from a um, excavator, uh, UTVs, um, uh, mowers. They're just, there's a lot of push towards electric, and this thing just seems like a, a great tool for someone to save their back that's in, in that kind of construction industry. What is the price point on this machine? Price point starts at $89.50 for okay. this machine, $10.9 on the slightly larger ox machine. Mm -hmm. For the show, we've been running a show special. Of course, it's going to, by the time we leave here, that's huh? going to be gone. But a $1,500 rebate okay. uh, from the manufacturer, and we knocked another 10% off that. So it's, Yeah, it's, that would be a good it's deal. It's been a good deal. I don't think it'll fit in the uh, overhead bin of my airplane, though. <laughs> All right, you have a good day. Thanks Thank you for by. your time. So that looks like an easy way to make a trench. I don't know that I've ever seen a handheld trencher. Like most of you, I trench with a shovel. All right, guys, that's day two of the Equip Expo 2023. I think we brought to you everything we possibly could. We're tired, so we're gonna wrap this up. So until next time, y'all take care out there. And remember, life's short, tractor hard. See you guys.